pleased with him there's a hadith narrated from him and the meaning of that hadith is like this and he stated that once on a certain occasion the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we were present in his gathering and all of the companions were present in the majlis in the gathering and suddenly the noble prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stated that do you want to see the people of paradise do you want to see a person of paradise if you want to then the person who comes next look at that person he is the inhabitant of paradise and then everyone's looking around and the desire increased that subhanallah we are going to see a person of paradise. Where is he coming from? So the companion said that we were suddenly alert, attentive, looking and waiting. That that person who comes next, he's going to be a person from paradise. Who is this person? After a while they saw that one Ansari companion, he came to the gathering. Very simple approach. And he did wudu. Then he came into the masjid and the water from his wudu that was dropping from his beard the droplets from the water of his wudu and he had the vessel in his left hand which he had used for wudu and all of the sahaba started to see him that the prophet sallallahu gave a good news for him and he didn't even know and so the gathering around the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam all the companions were there and this was a gathering full of adab and manners no one speaking talking chatting no eyes raised up high the sitting down the necks bowed the sahaba ikram in the hadith it is stated the sahaba used to sit in such a way that when they were next to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that if upon their necks even a bird was to sit they wouldn't realize they wouldn't you know move their heads to look they would be silent attentive focused they would sit like this with manners and adab. So when they saw that the companion had come in and everyone in the gathering was silent, then he sat down. And the Holy Prophet ﷺ continued to speak and he sat in the gathering for a little while and then after that, with silence, he got up and he went back. Then the gathering, the assembly finished and it stated the next day, we were present again in the gathering of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said after some time that do you want to see the person from paradise? And the person who will come now, look at him, he is from paradise. Look at him, he will be from paradise. So the Sahaba Ikram said, let's see who comes today. Hazrat Anas radiallahu is narrating this hadith. Hazrat Anas radiallahu. They said, let's see who comes now. So they were waiting, some time passed, they looked again after some time. That same Sahabi, the Ansari, in the same way after doing wudu, water droplets dropping from his beard, his body, and the vessel of wudu in his left hand, and he came to the gathering. He sat down in the same way like the day before. Some time passed, he joined the majlis, the gathering, the assembly. After that, with silence, he got up and he left again. He departed. Third day came, the gathering was present around the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All of the companions, the Sahaba Ikram were there. And nobody even thought about this. And again the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said again, announce that do you want to see a person from paradise? If you want to see somebody from paradise, if you want to, then the person is about to come. Look at him, he is the person from Jannah. He is Jannati. He is Jannati. 
So the Sahaba Ikram, the Blessed Companions thought that let's see who comes today. And they thought who is going to come now after a little while. That same Sahabi, mashallah, third day, subhanallah. Glory be to Allah. What a companion. What status. Three days, mutawatir. He is being given the title of Jannati from the Prophet ﷺ. It could be that in this gathering that there may be more people, there may be more people. In the third majlis there will be more people. So it's apparent that in the whole majlis, the Sahaba Akram were told that this is a Jannati. So different Sahaba on each day listening to the same announcement. Imagine his status and rank. This person who is from paradise. And what a beautiful hadith. The Holy Prophet ﷺ he said that every Sahabi of mine is a sparkling, twinkling star. Whichever Sahabi you follow, you will be guided. Every companion of the noble Prophet ﷺ was like the star that would guide. Whoever you follow, you will be guided. So third day, same announcement. And this announcement about this Sahabi, the good news, he with silence got up again. The majlis was about to end. And now a Sahabi from within that gathering, Abdullah ibn al-As radiyallahu anhu, all of the companions, he had the little bit of courage. He had a thought that I think it's correct. That the noble Prophet ﷺ, his tasarruf was on him. Tasarruf was his focus. The Prophet ﷺ's focus and attention was on this sahabi. And then he was sent so that this subject could be closed and, and also delivered to people like us today in this day and age. So this sahabi got up. <coughs> and when, the, when he was leaving, departing, the one who was the jannati, then as Abdullah ibn al-As, he went after him. And he said, Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum salam. He said, I want to request something from you. He said, Yes, please. He made an excuse and spoke to him that I am forced, this is the situation at home. And uh, he just made some discussion up. Three days I need to stay outside, I can't stay home. So I'm thinking, What shall I do for three days? Where can I go? Do you know anyone? Or have you got any place where I can stay for three days in your home? Three days, three nights? He said, Yeah, yeah, no problem. Please come to my home. No problem. The Jannati, he said, I live in a simple abode, simple dwellings. You can come. So the, that Sahabi went with him because obviously he wanted to analyze him. So his objective was to what? Not to give him burden, but this is a Jannati and the announcement has been made. What does this person do? What is his practice? I need to see him, pay attention to him. So he took those steps. He followed him home. He said, let me see what action, what deed that it's been announced that he's from Jannah. He's from paradise. And we do things as well. MashaAllah, he was a Sahabi. We also practice, we do deeds. <coughs> so he didn't tell him why he was going to his house. He wanted to see what he was doing. So he went to his home three days, three nights. And here a beautiful thing comes out. That when... It's sunnah, isn't it? This becomes sunnah. That whenever you want to create an awareness with somebody, and you want to recognize that person, then this hadith tells us, teaches us that spend three days, three nights with that person. Spend some time with that person. And this is a learning, great learning. And in the life, in the world, we see someone who's a fraudster. Maybe he's not a fraudster. Shall I do business with him? I have to do transactions with him. Or I need to keep spiritual connection with him. Or people are saying, he's this and he's that. Let me see, how can I prove this? So be cautious, be cautious. And cautious again, the hadith is in front of us. That even though, even though you may think the world of that person, but as it says that don't just run ahead before you understand the information. Don't ask people about him because maybe you can't trust him. The best way of the sunnah according to his hadith through this sahabi, be quiet, spend three days and three nights in the company of that person. And observe that person and Allah Ta'ala will show everything to you. A to Z, his adab, his discussion, his words and his movements. This is hikmah, wisdom that Allah Ta'ala will show us through the example of this sahabi. Three days, three nights. What a beautiful path that has been opened up to us. So, going back to the hadith, the sahabi, he went with him. So the, the sahabi, the jannati, he was simple, ansari, from Madinatul Manawwara. And his uh, pastime, his career was agriculture. He had some fields, and you know, to, to plow the fields is hard, it's tough, it's physical. He used to get tired, all day used to work. And the other sahabi observed him. What's he doing? He saw, the, what is this person doing? And he saw the first point he analyzed. That he's working 
physically in his fields, he's plowing his fields, he's a farmer, he's working hard and fast. So apply this in your life. Do you want to become people of paradise? You do? If you'd want to, then put your hands up. So today, learn from this hadith, the points that I tell you from the hadith. That's why we're talking, isn't it? That's why we're here today. Because we want to go to Jannah. The Al-Nazdabi is speaking, all the Sahaba were there. And why did Rasulullah say he was Jannati? Why was this Sahabi going there? Because this was the of the focus of the Shaykh, the Prophet wasallam, on this Sahabi who went with him to spend three days, three nights with him. MashaAllah. So he had that feeling, that desire in his heart that he wanted to go after him so that we could also get this hadith sent to us so many years later because people of intellect, they grab these points and make their lives. These points, the nasiha that reaches to us, this is not some jackanory tales. Folk tells we've got time, we're sitting here in Allah's home. We've come here. Why have we come here? Allah's given us health, He's given us intellect, understanding. No one's forced to come here. So why have you come here? Why are you sitting here to eat halwa? To eat pilau rice after the gathering or to see my face? No, Allah Ta'ala is merciful to you that any words or points that come to your mind during this bayan, then inshallah you should go far from Jahannam and close to Jannah paradise. That should be the result. Those people who sit here alert, focused in these majalis, in these gatherings, in such mahfils they sit where Allah is mentioned, Rasulullah is mentioned, Hadith is mentioned, Quran is mentioned, and they sit with this niyyah, intention, brothers and sisters who are listening, that today what we hear, Alhamdulillah, this message Allah Ta'ala Rabbul Kareem has delivered this message to us, and yaqeenan, definitely we will practice on this. Definitely we will practice on this and emulate this. Such a glad tiding given to this sahabi, the jannati, and this news comes to us. Why? As a story, Rasulullah ﷺ was rahmatullah alameen, mercy to the universe till the day of judgment, that this deed that this sahabi jannati has done, if you do the same, then also the news for him is a jannati, you will also be a jannati. The doors will be open for you. The doors will be open for you. If you imitate this sahabi, if you think you're just reading hadith, it's a story 1400 years ago, close the book, go home. This is not the style of Islam. This is not the Quran, nor this is the hadith. Any sahabi, if his life, tale, story, example, practice reaches to us, these aren't stories for history books and history lessons. They're every second of their lives, the people of intellect today, of understanding of fear of Allah in their hearts, who have belief in maut, for them, this becomes the light, the candle. And in this candle, this light will become the light, the guidance for you, for your life, brothers, for the whole life. So Alhamdulillah, those people understand their life destiny changes. These are the words. What else is there to know? Deen. Islam. So the first point we see in the example of this Abi. Listen carefully if you want to go to paradise. Follow these advices of this Abi. So he said the first thing I analyzed, mashallah, you brothers work, you go shop, drive taxis, work, jobs, employment, run a business. Everyone works and does trade. So it explained that the first quality of that Jannati, that Sahabi from paradise, that the other Sahabi observed and saw him, then mashallah, definitely will be that result that will lead to Jannah. And definitely this is those words that the Prophet ﷺ wanted to to deliver to us was that Sahabi went to see him so remember this that when something comes to your mind to your heart suddenly you hear something and you think ah yeah this is that point then that is the point that was going to be delivered to you so the second Sahabi going to observe the first Sahabi was Jannati and these points were coming into his mind in his heart that I'm observing him and these are the things the lessons I'm learning this is the same road map he's delivered to us through the hadith that will take us to Jannah so the first thing we saw from his Amal he said that let me see the first practice that he does so in his heart he saw the first Amal the first practice the first thing he saw with his eyes was that mashallah, he's working hard, he's busy, he's focused, and he's and suddenly when the adhan was called, he dropped all of his work. He left all his work. In that same condition, he left his work and straight away he did wudu, fresh wudu, and with the love, with passion, he ran after the masjid and prayed salah in congregation in jamaat. So this is the point that the sahabi noted. Person who wants to go to paradise, he must bring this practice into his life. If you bring this into your life here on planet earth, if you want to open the first door of paradise, how does it open? Say it loudly. With what? With what? With salah. With the prayer. Not I'm cooking food and curry and I'm going to drop the kids and the school run and I'm running here helter skelter. These are not excuses. Where you put excuses, Allah is kareem. He knows that we are his servants. Where there are excuses, Allah Ta'ala hasn't given orders. 
Allah Ta'ala doesn't force us to leave the essential things in life. Allah Ta'ala doesn't order that. The things we have to do in our life to earn, to pass the day. Allah Ta'ala could have said fast all year long or keep 24 hour fast. No. Allah Ta'ala, whatever He has given us as laws in Sharia, they are not to force us to practice. Rather that ibadah is so tasty and delightful that without doing that, we never feel content and peace in the heart. Tell me, a person who's used to, who's got love in his heart, that he wants to pray salah in jama'ah, in congregation. His fajr is not hard, isha is not hard for him, no dhuhr, no asr, no maghrib. Nothing is hard for him, and never is it hard for him to leave the attractions of the dunya. It's easy for the mu'min to leave the attractions of the dunya. Rather, Allah Ta'ala Himself makes the path easy for that person. Allah Ta'ala opens the paths, the doors, the route. If we sit down, oh, it's too hard, I can't practice, it's difficult. Brothers, then we give up even before we start. Jannah is very easy. It's very easy to attain. But yes, you have to overcome some rocky uh, routes on the way to get to Allah. And you have to obviously take some footsteps and uh, make effort. So Allah Ta'ala says, the person who's a liar, man or woman, who after hearing this hadith, and they say that they will go to paradise without this action of salah, it's impossible. This is the deception of shaitan. Deception. If you do not practice salah, if the time of salah has come and you are delaying, salah time has come and you say, I don't need to pray, I'll pray later or tomorrow, man, woman, wherever they are, this is not acceptable. But sharia does give us the flexibility. Fiqh, the jurisprudence tells us that where is the flexibility in movement, but don't use your nafs and brain, oh, I can leave the salah because of the X, Y, and Z. No, follow the principles of the deen. And then we claim we are jannati, I'm going to go to paradise. Then where is this hadith come from? Where is this story come from? Why would Rasulullah allow his sahabi to go three days and three nights to observe that sahabi? Why did he go to his house then? to observe these actions, to deliver the message to us so we understand today. It's not chance that this hadith came, this is deen. Deen is not by chance, deen is wahi, revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is information, technical information. This sahabi, he came, then he went, then the next day he came, then he went, then he came again, then he went. This is specification of Islam. This is technical date of Islam. Rasulullah Sam told us that this is Islam. And he made it easy for us. Don't run left and right blind in the dunya. First step, if you want to go to paradise, what's the first step? What's the first step? Is salah. And the Rasulullah Sam said, whichever of my companions you follow, you will be guided because my companions are like the stars. And you will get together. So let's promise today. Let's promise today that this Ansari Sahabi, we will imitate him and inshallah life and hereafter will be made. MashaAllah, the Sahaba did great actions. Great actions. Maybe we can't do all of them. But Alhamdulillah, this hadith has come to us, it came to my mind today. And I'm sitting here, I'm thinking and you're thinking and I'm talking and you're listening. Alhamdulillah, it's very easy for us to practice this. Very easy for us to practice this. Say, tell me, are we going to imitate this companion? Say, inshallah. Say, inshallah. Easy for us. The so first thing, pray salah in jamaat, in the masjid, if you have no excuse to leave the jamaat. Remember, any sahabi, what did he do? He prayed, he did wudu, where did he go? He prayed salah. So the other sahabi noticed this, observed this. So look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many masjids, we don't even know, so many masjids have opened up in our locality. This masjid, there's a masjid here, it's open. You go past, you're walking, oh, where shall I pray? Where's the masjid? There's someone tells you, this is a new mosque, here's a mosque as well. Yeah, it's a converted house for a few days, then they're going to make it into a, a purpose-built mosque. Allah Ta'ala has opened so many masjid for us. For what reason? For this reason, that Allah Ta'ala wants to fill up the town with the Muslims. Allah Ta'ala wants to fill up the town with the Muslims. And Allah Ta'ala wants to give us Jannah, paradise, all of us. So Allah Ta'ala has opened the doors of paradise. What are the doors of paradise? The masjid. The masjid is the door to paradise. Allah Ta'ala has opened it for us. There's not one mosque, is there? Go around, travel around, every turn, every so far, masjid, warm water, towels, modern masjids, nice doors, nice carpets, luxuries, and you're welcomed. You're welcome when you come to the masjid. Allah Ta'ala welcomes you. Then you sit down, your heart feels like you want to read some Quran. And you get peace in the heart. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala has given us ease. So the first thing of the first job of the sahabi, he was looking at him, observing him. Okay, he's busy during the day. But as soon as the azan's called, he runs, does wudu and goes to the masjid. Okay, we all do this. So what further does he do? Then he kept on observing, looking at him for three days, three nights. He said, in the three days and three nights, I saw additional point. He was very silent. Maybe he was a Naqshbandi. Like today, the Naqshbandi school of the Sawaf, mashallah, teaches this. Keep silent as much as you can. He used to say silent. And he wouldn't talk unnecessarily. And if he spoke, he would speak khair 
akhirah, deen, and he would not speak anything else. He said in these three days and three nights, because the habit in three days and nights, that will be the habit for his whole life. Remember this point. If you see someone three days and nights, not one day, how many days you need? Three days to observe the person. This is the first lesson of this hadith. I speak about myself. I'm not giving you any proof from anything else. The first lesson I learned from this hadith is that three days and three nights is important to analyze someone. This is not the seed of the hadith. Or I'm just speaking about myself, my understanding that these three days, there must be hikmah in this number that you can test someone for three days. This is the point that came to my heart. You don't have to say this, but I say this definitely. Anyway, now... So the second point that he observed was in the three days and nights, he didn't talk idle talk, futile talk, oh, what's happening, what's the weather like, where did you go, how, how are you, oh, kya hal hai, kya hal hai, okay, what then, oh, what did you do earlier on, oh yeah, what then, and what did they do, and what did he do, and what's the news today, what's the latest, waste of time discussion, promise to yourself from today, don't waste your time in futile talk, do you promise, do you promise, if someone says, assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum as salam, and stay silent. Don't be afraid, ashamed. Why are you silent, brother? Are you ill? Are you keeping a fast? No, no. I'm, everything's fine. After a while, uh, is it prayer time? Have you prayed salah, brother? Should we go to pray salah? Talk about salah. Talk about Allah. Talk about sensible topics. Business. If it's need, needy. Don't talk waste of time. Okay, how are you doing? Uh, what do you do nowadays? What happened there then? What did he say? Oh, what happened to that person? You know that person? And then you start gossip mongering and backbiting and sins come. People who have got nothing to do, no pastime, their stomach's full, they've, they've hoarded the money at home and they wander around in the dunya. Let's find someone else. Let's do gapsha, chit chat, standing in the corner, standing in someone's shop, high street, etc. Wasting time, such valuable time, seconds and minutes and hours in our lives, we are wasting. We are wasting the moments of our life by chit chat, wasteful chit chat. If the second goes, it will never come back. The second that's just gone will never come back. The day is just gone today, it will never come back. The night that's passing now, we're sitting in the Friday night, this will never come back. Such a valuable night, Friday night. This is the night of Juma. Do you know this? This is the night of Jummah. How valuable is this? Who made us come here and sit in this home? In the Mishkat al-Masabi, there's a hadith that every Monday and Thursday, every person's deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every Monday and every Thursday, our deeds are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you wasting time at that time? Futile talk, waste of time, gossip. It better than this is you go to sleep. Don't do nothing else. So uh, he saw the sahabi that he always spoke good. He didn't always so develop this habit. Will you develop this habit? Say inshallah. So two points now. Salah in jamaat and don't waste the time talking. Is it hard to get jannah? We think it's some fantastic actions we got to do. It's too hard. Islam is hard. No, bring these two points into your life. And the news has been given. First is salah in congregation. Secondly, zip the tongue. Zip the lips. No waste of time discussion. Bring this habit into your life. The night would come. When the night came, that sahabi was tired. He was tired working all day long. Then suddenly after Isha, into his bed. No waiting, wasting time, looking at other things, talking. He would lie down in his bed straight after Isha. Sir. Straight. He was a companion. He said, in these three nights I saw him sleep straight after Isha. And he used to get up at Fajr time. Maybe he got up in between. He used to do dhikr of Allah. And after that, he would toss... His turn and go to sleep. This is a hadith, isn't it? Someone, if he can't get up, he should get up, do a bit of dhikr of Allah, and he will get the thawab of tahajjud. So he didn't see him pray tahajjud. He saw he was tired. Oh, I've driven taxi all day long, all night long. I'm used to praying tahajjud. I'm lying down, my eyes don't get up. I see there's three minutes left, four minutes left, tahajjud time's finishing. I can't pray the rakatain, the two rakat. Do dhikr straight away, two, three minutes, say dhikr of Allah, kalamat, and verses, and inshallah you'll get the reward of tahajjud. This is hadith. So he said, I saw this sahabi do this. So this is the third point. Easy for us now. We can do this also. Then he said, after three days, he said, I saw no other action special. This tasbih, long sujood, or ibadat, or voluntary prayer, or fasting. He said, I saw nothing else, this sahabi said. I said, there must be such a deed. I have not seen something special quality. The Holy Prophet ﷺ gave the news announcement that he's from Jannah, he's from Jannah, he's from Jannah. Three days in a row. So, before I departed from his home, I said, I have to tell you the truth. Why did I come? He said to the Sahabi, he said, my brother, I tell you straightforward, honestly, I'm telling you this and I'm going to go. I didn't come to stay with you. I had a home. I made an excuse. That I heard from the noble Prophet ﷺ, he gave the glad good tidings for you that you are Jannati. We were told you are from paradise. 
He gave the good news. I came to see the deed that you performed, the special quality characteristic due to which you are going to paradise. Uh, farming, agriculture, working hard, and you pray salah like us on time, you sleep like us after Isha, you do the same things as us. I can't understand what deed have you got special. Anyway, Allah knows best, so I thought I'd tell you the truth. That is why I came. And if you got any deed that you do, tell me, because in three days I've seen nothing else. So he was amazed, shocked. He said, me? I don't do nothing. I'm nothing, I'm nothing special. I've just seen what you've seen. I do what you've seen. I've got no other deed to my name. That's all I do. He said, okay. And he departed. He said, little bit of time passed. And he called me from behind, Abdullah, Abdullah. Tahal, Tahal, come, come here, come here. And I went back and said, why? He said, I, I've just remembered one of my deeds. Subhanallah. And we have to do this deed. Will you do this deed, brothers? Say inshallah, because this is tazkiyah, reformation, rectification, improvement. That's why we're here, to improve ourselves. So he said that I do one deed, and that deed is, maybe I didn't notice, maybe you didn't notice, I didn't think it was anything special, but in my heart, I have no bad envy or jealousy or bad feelings against any other Muslim brother or believer. I have no bad feelings against any person I know. My heart is totally clean and pure. And if I feel anything about anyone, it's goodness for everyone. I have 0% ill feeling against anyone. And I continue to do this. And suddenly that sahabi said, ah, this is it. Remember what I said? When you hear something, you know that's it. That's when he said, my brother, this is your deed. Now I know this is why you are Jannah. That in your heart, you are pure, you are clean, you have no envy, malice, hatred, subhanallah. What a great quality characteristic, and this message has reached us today. Look, look, we all pray salah, we all do worship, we all recite Quran, we all do all of the deeds, we serve the deen, don't we? But, when do you get Jannah? When your heart is clean inside, sparkling clean, shining. Jannah is a clean and pure place. Paradise is pure and clean and sparkling and transparent. So we have to make ourselves clean and sparkling and transparent. Because we have to be inside clean first. Inner, batin, our inner self, our sins, the darkness brothers. If the sins and darkness go in our bodies and continue, how can I walk into paradise? How will I go into paradise? The noble Prophet ﷺ, how beautifully he taught us and delivered this message to us. So this is the effort we must make. Strive, work hard. Physically, spiritually, all our kabrina, salafi, our salafi salihin and pious predecessors who had khankas and institutes all year long, all day long, all night long, they did dhikr, adhkar. They had the sob at the company of pious sheikhs themselves and they picked up the slippers of their sheikhs and put them on their head and worked hard and did mehnat and struggled in the khankas and did dhikr and strive to clean. What? For what reason? So they could clean the diseases from within their batim. This is why. And this is the point, this is the solution. We come here for dhikr. Why are we here? The majalis of dhikr, adhkar, and tazkiyah, so that we can clean our hearts and our batin in, in ourselves. If we don't attain this, we don't come here just to say the words. Let me tell you this, brothers. We don't come here to repeat dhikr verses. This is not the objective. Dhikr is the method. It's the tool. It's the means. Don't be satisfied. Oh, I've come to the masjid today. I did 1,000 tasbih today. I said this verse a thousand times today. For example, you're ill. And you take the capsule. Amoxilin. Antibiotic tablets. Paracetamol. The objective is not the tablet. Not the medicine. If you are getting cured by that tablet, that's fine. But if you're not getting cured by that tablet, the doctor changes it. This is not good for you. It's not compatible for your body. It's not going to solve you. So the objective is not the medicine. The objective is to be healthy. So Allah Ta'ala has given us dhikr. This is the tonic. This is the medicine. If due to zikr we are becoming healthy, then the dhikr, alhamdulillah, is full of light and nur. This my Hazrat, my Shaykh used to tell me, that after dhikr of Allah, if you are seeing changes and improvements and rectification, and your salah becomes like the sahaba, and your rizq becomes halal like the sahaba, and haram starts to itch you, it's not going into your stomach, the haram, and your hand doesn't go towards wrong, and temporarily you did bad things and you want to leave them, then you can consider that you've attained the objective of dhikr of Allah, because your life is going towards the positive, leaving the negative. You've attained the objective of going to a Shaykh. You are a marid, a student of a Shaykh, you have become successful, going to a Shaykh, becoming more read to have a shaykh is this for magic do we go there to see dreams and feel weird and try to show off to people or do we want to show people that we're a student of a shaykh and i'm seeing visions now and miracles and dreams and people are calling me uh, pious now and i want to be more pious this is sinful 
This should never be the objective. This will take us more towards Jahannam, towards the hellfire. This is a story. This is not the objective of doing dhikr or having a shaykh or a teacher. This is not the reality. This is not the path of the sunnah. No, I'm telling you definitely 100% this. To go to a shaykh, to have a teacher, to be a student, to learn the things, the khanka coming here for dhikr, this is the true direct path of Islam that will take us directly to paradise if we do it properly. So what do these things do? The majalis, the gatherings, the assemblies of dhikr, they clean us from within. And the person who sits in these gatherings and sits in the gathering and the company of a wali of Allah, consider you are successful. Consider you are successful. And the person who doesn't feel this, he has bayah, he's pledged allegiance, he's done tawbah, he said he'll leave the sins, he sat with the sheikh, with the teacher. Oh, no, 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 don't tell that person, I'm doing these things. Inside you're doing everything. He may not know, but Jahannam knows what you're doing. Hellfire knows what you're doing. You've attained all of the teachings and you're still playing like a joker. This is not magic. We have to try ourselves. So what do we have to do? What is the sin that we have been taught in this hadith? One sin. That Sabi said that I have no ill feelings, malice, hatred, envy, jealousy against anybody. What is kina? Tell me, what is this? The definition of this characteristic, mashallah, you are Sufi Hazrat, you are people of understanding, this sin should have come out of your hearts. Many people have got sheets that they track their sins. Who's taken this out of their hearts? Tell me. If not, then tell me, this is not by force that you have ill feeling against someone. This is a sin that you bring into your heart yourself. It's in your control. And it's in your control that you can leave it. I'm saying a very big statement. The things that are in your control, then it's in your control to leave that sin also. You don't need angels to come to tell you. Jibreel alayhi salam is not going to come to you, to your heart, and take this hatred and ill feeling out of your heart. You brought these feelings into your heart yourself, and you yourself have to take these feelings out of your heart. You yourself have to extract this sin out of your heart. This is within our control and power and influence. See, there are some sins that are not done on purpose, not in control all the time. But this sin is in our control. It's in our realm, and it's in our realm and control that we can leave it. So what is this sin? Think. You don't know? Today, inshallah, I include myself, I'm explaining to myself, I'm teaching myself, and you also listen at the same time so you can benefit. So what is this sin? Well, how big is this sin? Like I said in the hadith, so I'll f- complete the hadith first. That every Monday, and do you know, there are five nights that come to us in the year, five nights, big nights, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the Muslims, the believers, the ummatis, except for who? In that person whose heart there is kina. In those five great nights, he is also not forgiven, that person. So what a big sin this is. And I'll tell you the reason why this is a big sin. I'll tell you the reason. Monday and Thursday nights. Monday and Thursday nights, the deeds are presented. And the Holy Prophet ﷺ said that every Monday and Thursday night, the deeds are presented to Allah. Of every believer, Allah Ta'ala forgives the sins of the people, those who ask for forgiveness. Allah forgives all of them except that person who has this disease in his heart. This ill feeling. So tell me, have I got these negative thoughts in my heart? Have I ever analyzed? Have I ever scanned my heart? Oh, I think I pray Salah, I'm fine, I'm the best. I've done tasbih, Allah, 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 I'm, I'm the best. Have you got this in your heart? This sin? Have you got bughuz? Have you got backbiting? Have you got envy? Have you got jealousy? Have you got hatred? Have you got malice? Have you got pride in your heart? Why do you think you are jannati? When the last breath comes out of my life, then I'll see what I am. Then the reality will come out who I am. I need to wake up now. I need to prepare now for the grave. Now, today. This is preparation. This is not some story, brothers. This life that's passing, the days, the months, the years. This is reality. And that person who has kina, who has malice in his heart, my brothers, the two nights in the week, Monday and Thursday night, all the sins will be forgiven by those who ask for forgiveness, except for that person who has this disease in his heart. So what is this sin? Then listen, the definition. If a person fights, quarrels, argues with someone, we have this in society, a home, outside, with the kids, wife, outside, happens at the shop, at your business premises, in the street, you have an argument, you have a, a quarrel with someone, or a dispute, and when you have a quarrel, dispute, what happens naturally? Naturally. What happens? Anger comes, yes? There's opposition between the two parties, you'll hate what he says to you, and he'll hate what you say to him. And what happens then? The anger will come. The anger brews inside. It storms up. It develops. He says something to me. I say something to him. And we start arguing with each other. And the anger comes. And then I lose my temper. Yes? And this is the feeling. A bad feeling comes in the heart. And the heart goes narrow. Yeah? It goes narrow. And you've got bad thoughts against that person. Ill feeling against that person. 
and then you don't feel good and your heart doesn't feel good and your brain doesn't feel good and you can say that some hatred comes into your heart for that person this is kina this is not kina this is not the disease what do we call this this is not the disease because this is due to nature until yet up till now we still haven't got that disease but after this event after this event after this condition when you are in the anger after that, if in your heart you are opposed to that person and you have feelings of badness against that person, if after this situation where you are angry with each other, you depart, the scene has ended, and then after that bad thoughts are coming into your mind, your heart against that person, you're thinking bad about that person, and you're getting angry against that person, I'm going to do this to that person, I'm going to backbite against him, I'm, gonna, I'm going to disrespect him, I'm going to rub his name into the dust under my feet. This is the disease of the heart. And this is the disease mentioned in this hadith. Until... Until you keep on having hatred for him in your heart and think bad against him and have bad feelings against him and have ill feelings against him. But when you have this feeling that I am not going to let him off. He was angry against me or he said this against me. So when the bad feelings keep rotating and developing and living within your heart, I'm not going to leave him. I'm going to finish off him off. I'm going to have revenge against him. I'm going to take it back against him. I'm going to do this to him. I'm going to disrespect him. I'm going to rub his name in the dirt, etc. What's going on then? This is azim sin that Allah Ta'ala says, I will never forgive. I will never forgive. And this is it. This is the point. So what has happened now? Why is this a big sin? Why? Because only that person can do according to his capacity. He can only physically do what is according to his capacity in anger. So the anger came, the hatred went to the top, to the top, and the bad feelings went to the top. But he can only do what physically he's capable of doing. So what will he do then? What will he do? He can't do too much, then suddenly he'll start backbiting. Because he can't physically do anything to the next person. So he'll backbite, he'll slander. He will say things that totally lies against that person to this extent that he will come to the point of revenge. And as he sees the past that shaitan opens for him, he will continue to the end. It's possible he will murder that person or beat that person or prepare for that person to get beaten or afflicted. And there are many doors today, shaitan has opened black magic today. And black magic, white magic, shaitan, jinnat, you have all of this zulam and darkness and all of the things that is happening in the society today. Haram. What does happens here? That due to the ill feeling, that sin developed, developed, increased, increased, and so much came into his heart that he could not turn back and go back to square one. He could not save himself. See how big a sin this is. How it's destroyed society today. We should do istighfar, tawbah, repent. We think it's a small thing to have this disease in the heart, kina. Never have ill feelings in someone. Oh, you see, when I see him next time, I'm going to straighten him. Oh, you watch what I do to that person. When you have these feelings in your heart, this is the disease of the heart and the noble Prophet ﷺ taught us the solution. If you get angry, you have an argument with someone, I'll tell you the solution now, the cure. You're angry, you have an argument with someone, with anybody, home, family, outside, friend, business, work, employees, this happens, you have an argument, and you feel bad, a that person straight away stop you. Straight away put the brakes on and stop on that feeling emotion because you know when you go beyond that, then bad thoughts will come, bad feelings will come, and two actions you have to do straight away. Select one of these two actions and you will become successful upon successful. Do one of two actions and then you will go into reverse gear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us a chance at that point. If we stop, what's the first chance? That instead of taking revenge, take revenge on yourself. The amount that he did oppress to you, except to you, then you do the same. So you can take equal to that person and that's allowed. That's allowed in deen. But don't do beyond that. But better than that, that the Prophet ﷺ taught us, and in this tariqah is great reward, great reward, Allah's pleasure, that that person, and that person who does this, his, his rank will be elevated and the doors of paradise will open. And if we do that, that's option two. And option two is when you're burning up inside, the fire is raging, you had an argument, and you were enraged, and there was dispute, and there was a quarrel, and you feel like doing something to that person, and shaitan's encouraging you, and you've got ill feeling developing, say, brother, go, I forgive you. Go, brother, I forgive you. Just like our noble Prophet said, go, I forgive you. Subhanallah. That's it. When you say this statement from your tongue, Everything you will forget what he did to you, what did he say, what did he not say, what did he do, what did he not do, what have you done? You've left it all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You assign it for Allah's sake, I forgive you, brother. Go. Sister, go. Such a great Alhamdulillah action. Hazrat Yusuf alayhi salam, what did he say? He said, Yusuf, 
Are you Yusuf? He said, yes, I've forgiven you. Go, I forgive you. Go, 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 I forgive you. SubhanAllah. Brothers, this is great action. And when will this occur? When we do tazkiyah, when we wash ourselves, purify ourselves, when we do dhikr and it comes onto the heart, when you spend time with the awliya Allah, the friends of Allah, then you'll get to that stage, you'll get to that point, that whatever dhulm is done against you, say, go, I've forgiven you, go, I've forgiven you, brother, go, I've forgiven you, sister. To attain this, brothers, we do dhikr of Allah. To attain this feeling, emotion, characteristic, we go to the friends of Allah, we sit with them, we listen to them. What are the objectives? We come here, we don't worship them, we don't do shirk with them, we don't do bidah with them, they're not gods for us, they're not prophets, it's no, the wali of Allah is a pious person and these are those people who themselves had good company. They clean themselves, they purify their hearts and the law of Allah is such that look in the mirror, the mirror will tell you how bad you are. So go and sit with the awliya Allah. Kunu ma'as-sadiqeen, Allah says in the Quran. And the qualities and their good characteristics will come into your life. When you see that they forgive people, then inside your heart will come the jazba passion that you will also forgive people. You will also forgive, I saw my Shaykh Hazrat Rahmatullah I swear by Allah. One person used to pester him so much, my Shaykh, so much. He took out a warrant against my Shaykh. He had bad akhlaq, bad conduct. What did he do? He said, close the masjid, close the khanqa, take the warrant out, police warrant. He took a warrant. Imagine a wali Allah, Zayf, my Shaykh is weak. And he said to the police that this person is doing this and that. He's doing wrong things, actions. And he took a police warrant out against my Shaykh. And it was... Forgiven. Hazrat said, no one is permitted to speak to him on my behalf. Hazrat Sahib said this, I saw such unique events, we used to stay silent. Very great students of my shaykh, they were urging to tell him off. But they didn't. But this story continued. And I saw one time that person came himself. That wrongdoer, the oppressor, he came to my shaykh Hazrat and he presented himself. He said, Hazrat, please forgive me. Hazrat said, go, I forgive you for the sake of Allah. I forgive you for the sake of Allah. And he used to sit him next to himself. And he used to love him, give him muhabbat and piyar and love and affection. My brothers, when you sit with the walis of Allah, their adat, their manners, their habits, they rub off onto you. They rub off onto you. And this is a great quality. Such a big enemy of yours. And you say, don't worry, don't say nothing to him. I'm saying don't say nothing to him. Why are you oppressing him? Leave him. Leaving. What a great statement. What a great action. That if I'm not saying nothing to him and I'm the oppressed, then why are you trying to take revenge? It's between me and him. He's swearing to me. Leave him. He's saying bad to me. Leave him. I have no feeling against him. I have no bad feeling against him. Alhamdulillah. Brothers, develop this quality. And this is called tazkiyah, tafsiyah, purification. And without this, you can never develop this quality. Never. When you develop this... May Allah allow this to happen. May it be that you have this and I need this to be developed. Then inshallah your enemies will start to love you. The whole generation will love you. Why not? When Allah starts to love you, then why shouldn't the people love you? Why shouldn't the people love you? When Allah becomes your, when you become Allah's beloved, then why will the society not be your beloved? So increase your heart, increase your capacity of your heart, absorb the love of the people, love people for the sake of Allah. Don't break the links, connect the links. Don't break the relationships, join the relationships, join the society, increase the love in society. And this is Sufism, brothers. The definition of Sufism is to improve your characteristics, quality, akhlaq. If you take the swears and give the duas, Rasulullah absorbed the swears and gave du'as. Thorns and nettles were thrown at him and he gave du'as. Rubbish was thrown on him and he gave du'as. He said, what's the situation today? And so many days the person hasn't thrown rubbish on me. Allah, and he went himself. The boy said, are you ill today? You haven't thrown rubbish in my path. Allah, and we are the ummati of that Nabi, brothers. Develop your akhlaq, increase your akhlaq, your manners. This is the path of Jannah. So what a beautiful point. So two things, we are praying salah. And we should control the tongue. And inside the heart, all of the dirt should come out. Alhamdulillah, then you are the Sufi. Not just that you go to the masjid and have the appearance, wear the clothes, this be Allah, 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 subhanAllah. And inside you're black, you're dirty, you've got revenge and fire raging against other people. No way. This is not the human being. The Sufi can never be like this. The Wali Wala can never be like this. The Dhaqirin can never be living life like this. That they swear to someone from their tongue. They say bad things to people from their tongue. Or bad actions come out from their tongue against other people. And Envy, hatred. So may Allah Ta'ala protect us all and make us pious and good humans. So this hadith, may Allah give us the tawfiq to practice on this hadith, recite the Ruchirif.